Hello and welcome to the program. I am Fola Shade Ogurinde. Food insecurity in Nigeria is a big deal. As a matter of fact, the Food and Agriculture Organization has projected that about 25.3 million people in Nigeria would face acute food insecurity during the June to August 2023 lean season. To fix this, President Bolat Novo declared a state of emergency on food insecurity in the country as a means to tackle the increase in food prices. Some of his strategies include approval of all matters pertaining to food and water as essential livelihood items be included within the purview of the National Security Council, as well as the immediate release of fertilizers and grains to farmers and households to mitigate the effects of the subsidy removal. So let's break down some of the details of President Tunubu's food security strategies with Ogona Okoko, who is an investment and economic development expert. Uh, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Now, in the face of rising food inflation, President Tunubu has declared a state of emergency in the food sector. Uh, what do you make of some of the strategies uh, the president has proposed? Yeah, in reality, um, they are very achievable. Some of, most of the strategies are very achievable. Um, all this, um, you know, having to have a season where a particular product or a particular uh, crop can be planted. The world, nobody... Nobody sees all those kind of things anymore in the world, you know. You know, you need to have a well structured irrigation or management system where, you know, you can actually grow your crop. Climate can be controlled through um, you know, the kind of farm houses you create or greenhouses you create rather. So I mean that there, there's really no crop in the world that you cannot grow in and out of season so some of those strategies are very realistic so my own really my concern it has always been having to have the right people plug in to be able to achieve um, some of these things and number two being able to get the major stakeholders within the ecosystem to plug in like the farmers those who do the extension programs for them to know that the game has changed is not is not the usual way you know just being able to you know galvanize the people and get the right people and then get the you know the, the right knowledge you know passed across to, to the people because i mean when it comes to farming and then food production and then um, you know crop crop production you know you, you're dealing with people who are basically, you know, just have, you know, little knowledge and then they are very traditional in the way they do things. So um, there's a lot of work trying to get them to understand that you have to actually unlearn to learn the new strategies of actualizing some of these things. Countries like, uh, uh, countries like um, uh, Brazil, China, you know, Thailand, they've gone beyond all of this. Even countries in Africa like Botswana, I mean, they've gone beyond all of this. So nobody is still sticking to a particular you know, local method or traditional method, their specified technology use, you know, you know, uh, uh, deployed to make sure that you uh, you can you can pull through when it comes to, um, you know, having food round round all seasons, you know, uh, generally, you know, to, to make sure that food food security is sustained in any in any economy. Uh, narrowing down these strategies, uh, the, the president said there would no longer be seasonal famine. How feasible is this in the face of um, insecurity in um, certain areas of the country? Now, you can say insecurity in the sense that, but I mean, um, there's also going to be um, some of these things will be happening at the same time, trying to make sure we, we tackle insurgency, you know, they, them also rolling out some, you know, security strategies to make sure that our food belt is not, you know, being, um, you know, suppressed. Because I've always seen this thing as a strategy to make sure we depend solely on um, imported food into Nigeria. Because, I mean, if you notice the, the security, the insecurity in Nigeria have always been, you know, at a particular belt. When you look at those belts, those are places where we manufacture beans, you know, where some of those crops are being manufactured in large quantity, tomatoes, um, you're, you're looking at rice. So if you see from, 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 from from um, Makodi, you have seen headers and Fulani clash. You have seen, um, you know, the Boko Haram attack in Bronu, where beans is being planted at very large quantities. So that's one side of it. Then number two, like I said earlier, it's not going to be um, 
something that has to grow in a particular place and then this other thing cannot grow. These are things that you can actually deliberately, consciously create an atmosphere to make sure you can plant all crop at, you know, at different seasons. So these things are happening in Israel. So, you know, technology can be deployed. Like I said, greenhouses can be used to plant tomatoes. So tomatoes cannot just grow in a particular place. You can actually create the atmosphere, create the climate for you to plant your tomatoes. Then again, you can't be having flooding in Nigeria in different places. And then you are talking about irrigation. So it means that we can actually trap water in different in different areas, there's a way they do those things that reticulate those waters and they become very useful to you. So, I mean, these are things that you, technology has, advancement in technology has, you know, has made it possible. And then I, I think um, deploying the right people, you know, to to man some of these um, agencies of government and then having a local uh, at the sub-national level is one of the things quick. And I know for him to have made that announcement, that means conversations have started and then um, uh, um, it's just for them to begin to to roll the, to roll the strategies out. The presidency also disclosed that the federal government will partner with states to create ranches in those that are willing to avail lands, introducing the controversial grazing reserves. Uh, what do you make of this development? Now, for me, it's beyond you know creating um, uh, grazing reserves and all of that. Um, um, you see, all you just need to do is do a little study on what has happened um, in, 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 a, in an African country, Botswana. Now, I'm not even going to Denmark. I just want to stay in Africa. Now, we've, um, there's something that we call in economic development, we call lifelines. So um, for me, this is the lifeline given to us, that thing given to you by nature to take advantage of, to grow, to grow your economy. Now, if um, um, in, in, in when it comes to dairy and um, animal husbandry, we've not been able to take advantage of some of these things. These are things you can actually do with technology. In Botswana, there are more cows in Botswana than human beings. Now, every cow in Botswana, as we speak, as we speak, has an owner, and the owner is traceable with a dashboard. Juno is so big that the department of uh, there's a department of um, animal husbandry in Botswana, in the Ministry of Agriculture in Botswana. There's also a, a meat commission in Botswana, Botswana Meat Commission. So it goes to show, and then what what te telco contributes to the GDP of Nigeria is exactly what meat, beef, contributes to the GDP of Botswana. So, I mean, if the strategy is to have states provide land so that we can ranch, now it goes beyond the ranching. We're looking at the situation where we can actually export this beef Yes, we can have beef here in our country for consumption. But I mean, for, for beef to begin to contribute to one of some, one, you know, to, to, to the FX, to, to foreign exchange income of our nation. If Botswana can actually export beef to Europe, and these are the strategies they've used. Use technology. There's a huge dashboard where each cow has an owner for two purposes, for, for, for tax purposes, and then number two, for for tracking of uh, 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 for security and tracking for medication for veterinary uh, for, for, for for veterinary inventories. So if there's an RFID RFID chip on every cow, just somewhere at the ear, you leave it there. So if the cow goes goes astray into somebody's farm, you will know the owner of the cow, and the owner of the cow will be, will be called for questioning and for for compensation. So it's gone beyond, yes, a state will provide you know, land for ranching. Yes, it's a, good, it's a good start. But the most important thing is going beyond that and making beef or making uh, animal husbandry big business as far as Nigeria is concerned. Look at it. If you have a cow trek all the way from Zamfara to, 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 to Nsuka, the cow cannot lactate. Look at how much we're spending on importing dairy products in Nigeria. It's alarming. Over six hundred million dollars. All the all the all the milk we use in Nigeria are all imported. All they do is they, they bag them here. Name the company. Each of each and every one of them. They are all bringing you know this uh, uh, dairy product in, in 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 sacks and then they bring it to the factory or whatever they call it. They are, they are, their plants and then begin to bag those things. And these are things. These are very achievable things. You know in, in, you know that we can do as far as our country is concerned. So if the president have said this is the first step for states that needs partnership. I think um, the, 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 the strategy should go beyond just them, for them to just bring land, for them to do ranching, and then begin to make people to understand that this is beyond traditional system of doing things. There are, these are, these are income earner 
for nations. People are making a lot of money from it. And then, like I said earlier, the, the, the veterinary inventory is also being tracked. So when you're sending beef to, 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 to countries like Germany, they know, they understand that the veterinary system is working. They know that the butchery is working. So from from the ranch or wherever it is to the butchery, everybody knows. And at that point, as soon as the cow enters the butchery, the company, the owner of the cow is already remitting tax to government. So these are things that are workable. I, I, and I, I, let's say, do you know the, 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 the beef business in Botswana has become so sophisticated to a point where cow leg is sold for 50 pula for the present exchange rate today. 50 pula is about um, 2,900 2, naira for one cow leg, a full cow leg. So if you buy the four cow leg in Botswana, they'll give you the head free of charge because they've already made the money from the beef. So in reality, I think this, this, there should be conversation. We should have as we should have a national conversation on this so that we understand that this thing that we are playing with is a lifeline given to us by God and we should take advantage of it and then help our nation grow. Now, lack of access to food storage facilities is a big problem in Nigeria, which leads to higher cost of food produce during their off-season. Uh, what were your expectations from the government in that regard? No, first things first, if you do your indexing, first of all, you have to do an indexing and then do crop indexing, I mean, or the particular product product indexing, so I would know what are we storing. Are we storing grain? Yes, if you remember very well, there were silos built by the Good Luck Administration. So if it's not enough, have we been able to even, you know, do a proper, you know, forensic audit to find out if these particular silos that we built are not enough? So are we talking about for 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 beef? On, on of course, it's only when you have um, a cluster, you have those ranches as being proposed that you can now say, okay, the storage system will be some refrigerated storage facility will be provided for or for uh, for fisheries so it all depends on the product that we are looking at here is it cassava you know so it's until you do that um crop indexing so it'll be difficult for you to now say okay we don't have enough or we don't have adequate but at least let's even have the logistics run let's have the the, the roads the farm gates all structured let's have a raw material uh, supply strategy to factories that will need some of these crops that will be produced so if we have those road networks with logistics sorted then storage actually will come storage basically comes when um there will be need to keep for, you know, like you said, off season. But like I said, if the strategy would be not to have, all, you know, to have a cycle of um, cultivation going on. So there will, really, there will be no need for the off season, you know, storage. So let storage, will not, the storage will not be for either, you know, keeping for export or keeping before, uh, you know, the, the, the evacuation or storage for, you know, for factory usage. So there are different kinds of storage we are going to be looking at now. But for like I said, there has to be that, um, you know, crop indexing, you know, product indexing, so that we'll know exactly what we're trying to deal with here. Well, Obuna Okoko, investment and economic development expert, thank you very much for your time and your contribution. We'll take a breather now, but Money Matters returns shortly to stay with us. Welcome back to the program. Nigeria's debt profile has risen yet again as a new administration of President Balatinobu plans to revitalize the economy. This comes following a statement from the Debt Management Office, revealing that the total public debt stock of the country currently stands at 49.95 trillion naira as of March 2023, a 3 trillion naira rise compared to 46.25 trillion naira as of December 2022. This, however, excludes the securitized 22.719 trillion naira ways and means advances of the Central Bank of Nigeria approved by the National Assembly in May. 
or Dr. Muda Yusuf, Chief Executive Officer Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprise, joins me now for more analysis. As always, thank you for joining us. Now, Nigeria's debt profile is putting more and more pressure on the nation's economy as the country spends majority of its revenue on servicing accrued debts. What do you make of this situation? The debt stock is uh, very uh, disturbing. It has been a major concern over the last uh, few years. Uh, the debt burden has also been a very serious concern, obviously not sustainable, uh, because we now find ourselves in a situation where we spend close to 80% or more of our revenue to service debt, which of course is not sustainable. So that is why there has been a lot of call for, you know, some very important reforms to take place so that we can improve on our fiscal consolidation and ensure that we have a debt environment that is more sustainable. So that for me, I think is what the ongoing play, part of the things are uh, the ongoing uh, reforms are all about to ensure fiscal sustainability, to strengthen fiscal consolidation. I think that is the task, immediate task before the present administration. Can the current government of uh, President Bolatinobo afford to borrow to service expenditure? Well, uh, it is likely there will be more borrowing, but there will be less borrowing. Uh, because given the steps that have been taken, uh, we are likely to see an improvement in the fiscal space. Uh, the fuel subsidy has been a major burden and one of the biggest you know, contributors to the debt challenge that we have. Now that the first subsidy challenge is out of the way, we expect to see less burden, you know, on the fiscal operations of government. So that's the lesson we need to borrow. And the second component of the reform is the foreign exchange, you know, flexibility that has been introduced, you know, to promote convergence in our foreign exchange environment. That is also to that is also likely to contribute a lot to the fiscal consolidation objective, because first we expect uh, more revenue, at least minimum between three to four trillion naira from the exchange rate uh, unification annually. Annually, uh, that of course is good for the economy and is good for fiscal consolidation. The second is the fact that we expect to see uh, a lot more inflows uh, foreign exchange to the economy, for, and we are beginning to see that because close to 80% of the funding of the R&D window are now done from autonomous sources, unlike what we used to have uh, before the liberalization of the foreign exchange market, where the CBN was practically uh, the sole supplier of foreign exchange to the R&D window. So that will improve investment. Investment has a way of, of also positively impacting on revenue. So that will also help. To, to, to reduce the debt, uh, the need to borrow more. So we are likely to see a reduction in fiscal deficits uh, in the next uh, few years. And once fiscal deficit begins to go down, then the challenge of uh, a high debt burden uh, will also begin to reduce. But we cannot immediately at this point uh, completely wipe out uh, the necessary, I mean, the need for borrowing. There will always be borrowing. Even some very prosperous economies, some advanced economies, many of them still borrow, but they have sustainable debt profile. And that is what we should work towards, to have a debt profile that is sustainable. And I think we are on course to achieving that. Well, this, of course, has been a very big concern for many um, industry watchers, such as yourself. But does Nigeria risk a default on its debt service? No, 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 no. There's no risk at all. Before now, we could say there was a risk, but with the, with the ongoing reforms, uh, there's not likely to be a major risk. Uh, the risk is, uh, is, is, is reducing, the risk of default is reducing because there's an improvement in the fiscal space uh, for these two major reforms. And again, the government is also talking about uh, reducing the cost of governance. Only recently, there was a circular from the budget office uh, outlining or uh, identifying, listing a number of 
uh, professional bodies and councils that uh, the government will stop funding from the treasury. So that is a first step. We expect that there will be a lot more uh, towards the whole idea of reducing the cost of governance. So the government is just one month old, so we still expect a lot of reforms. Now, finally, before I let you go, you've mentioned the fact that the, this present uh, administration would most likely still borrow, uh, signaling a further rise in debt burden. How will all of this affect the Nigerian citizen? Well, you see, the trajectory of borrowing and debt is declining. You know, the prospect that the debt will, will continue to increase is declining. So we are slightly to see decreasing level of debt. So that should give us some comfort. In the 2023 budget, we had a deficit of close to 12 trillion. You cannot overnight wipe out the deficit completely. You need to fund those deficits. So it's an incremental thing. It's a gradual thing. Gradually, we reduce the deficit and gradually we reduce the debt burden. So if anything, I think Nigerians needs to be a lot more positive about the outlook for debt and debt management and the outlook for fiscal consolidation, outlook for reduction in fiscal deficit. I think we should be a lot more positive at this time. Well, indeed, Dr. Muda Yusuf, Chief Executive Officer, Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprise. Thank you always for your time. And it's a wrap on the program. See you again next time. I am Fulashadi Ogurinde. Bye for now.